welcome everyone to lecture number 10 on nonlinear dynamical systems we will continue with the bendixson criteria and the poincare bendixson criteria in particular we will see important examples one is the lotka voltera predator prey model and also the van der pol oscillator let us start with the lotka voltera predator prey model this is studying how the population of two species vary as a function of time these two species are classified into prey and hunter so there is one species that is a prey another species that is a hunter and we will study the model of this prey and hunter species so of course we are studying a simplified model let xh be the hunter specimen in the model and let xp be the prey specimen in the model so what does this equation say x dot is equal to x dot h equal to minus x of h plus some quantity that depends on both xh and xp and x dot p equal to xp minus xh xp so the first term in each equation is how the particular species would evolve if there were no other species yeah so the first system first equation says that if there were no prey that is if xp were equal to 0 then xh would just decrease as a function of time it would decrease exponentially because there is no food yeah. so left to itself the hunter species would just decrease but for each interaction between xh and xp the hunter eats the prey and hence this extra in this extra the next term the second term in this right hand side is causing an increase in the hunter population so the hunter population decreases because of its own population and it increases because of its interaction with xp so the in, the rate of increase is proportional to both xp and xh population so it is bilinear in the two it is equal to the product the, that is the increasing increase causing term on the other hand the prey itself is just going to multiply it's going to increase exponentially when left to itself if there had been no hunter species and interaction with the hunter species causes xp to decrease so quantities xh and xp are all positive and whether the increase or decrease depends on its own population and also population of the other species so this is a reasonable model for how dynamics of two species that interact with each other evolves as a function of time of course we have simplified most importantly in the sense that more generally there would be some constants x dot h would be equal to minus a times xh plus b times xh xp and x dot p is equal to c times xp the rate of increase is proportional to some c times xp in general and the decrease the interaction causes a decrease with this multiplication with d so this is how one could study a general model but one can consider that we are choosing a different unit for xh and xp so that these constant become equal to 1 also there is some normalization that has been done so that we are studying this model so of course this itself is a simplification this model is also a simplification because there might be some higher order derivatives we have seen already how the population of just one species can vary with resource availability with the ability to reproduce depending on the interaction between species all that has been ignored we have assumed this first order dynamics with respect to itself and just the product the interaction is just the product of the two species population so the question that we can ask for this particular model is what are the equilibrium points what is the nature of the equilibrium point of the linearized system are there periodic orbits these are the questions that we will ask so let us go back to this particular model and we will find the equilibrium points for the system so d by dt of xh and xp is equal to minus xh plus xp times xh and this is xp minus xp times xh yeah so this is our f so equilibrium points 
points are those values of x h and x x p where f one of x h comma x p equal to zero and also f two of x h comma x p equal to zero. So what do we get by equating x h minus x h plus x p x h equal to zero and x p minus x p x h equal to zero? For a particular value of x h and x p to be an equilibrium point, these two equations have to be satisfied. So let us see what are the values for which these equations are satisfied. First equation says x h equal to zero or x p equal to one. Second equation says x p equal to zero or x h equal to one. So this gives us how many pairs of equilibrium point? So an equilibrium point has an x p and x h coordinate. So let us see what all possibilities are there for equilibrium point. So if both equations have to be satisfied, then one can have zero comma zero. Yeah, so this is nothing but x p equal to zero and x h equal to zero. So the first component in this is x h species value. Second is the x p population value. So both equal to zero is one equilibrium point. That is what we get from here, and both equal to one, one comma one. Yeah, so which which means x h equal to one and x p equal to one. This is another value for the equilibrium point. You see, notice that other th this, if x h is equal to zero, you cannot have x p equal to one. Why? Because for the other, uh, for both equations, this is equation one and this is equation two. Yeah, this is one, is two. Equation one says that any one of these two possibilities. Equation two says any one of these two possibilities. And when we combine them. We get that these two equilibrium points, these two points, these two values of x p and x h, are situations where the population species does not change as a function of time. So this is where x h, this is x p. So one equilibrium point is here, another equilibrium point is here. This is the equilibrium point one comma one. This is equilibrium point zero comma zero. As I said, the first component denotes x h value. Let let us see what happens if x p is always equal to zero. X p equal to zero means this is a hunter population. Yeah. So our dynamical equation system says that if x p is equal to zero, which means that the second term is always equal to zero, and if you put x p equal to zero here, then x h is just decreasing. That is how we have drawn these arrows. And if x h were equal to zero, so this is sitting on the x p axis, then x p just goes on increasing. This is how the arrows look. But more generally, it is a combination of the two. So, for example, let us take what happens at 0.5, 0.5. Let us draw the arrow at this particular point, which corresponds to point 0.5 and 0.5. So, at x h equal to half. And x p equal to half, we get x dot h equal to. So this is just substituting 0.5 in place of these two. So we get minus 0.5 plus 0.25, which is equal to minus 0.25. And x p dot is just 0.5 minus. 0.25, which is equal to 0.25. So this is a vector whose x h component is negative, but x p component is positive. So this is an arrow that looks like this. So that its x h component, the horizontal component is x h, it is decreasing, but x p component is increasing. So like this, we can draw arrows for all the points. One can check that this is how we get. Yeah, let me draw a bigger figure. Only the first quadrant is reasonable because the populations don't become negative. So this is a point one comma one. This is zero comma zero. 
as I said, XH population is going to decrease if XP is equal to 0. XP equal to 0 corresponds to this XH axis and XP axis corresponds to XH equal to 0. So, I am sorry. So, XH, XP, when left to itself, the prey population is going to increase. That is why the arrows should all be in the direction of increasing XP. So, the correct figure should be And this is a point 1 comma 1 and we already checked that at intermediate points at this point it is like this. The one if it is a little higher let us verify this that this is how it looks. So, uh, this itself is an equilibrium point if it happens to be at the point 1 comma 1 if the hunter population is equal to 1 unit and the prey population is also equal to 1 unit, then it remains constant. But for small perturbations about that point, the arrows I have drawn like this, but this requires verification. So, let us take a sample point. This particular point has XP coordinate equal to 1, but XH coordinate slightly more than 1. So, for example, let us think of consider the point XH comma XP equal to 1.1 comma 1 yeah let us see what happens for this particular point for this particular point we have drawn the arrow like this but let us check whether it indeed is like this so uh, x h dot x p dot equal to we are evaluating at the point x h comma x p equal to 1.1 and 1 so, this is minus 1.1 plus 1 times 1.1. So, this is equal to 1.1 and XP population rate of change of the prey population is equal to 1 minus 1 into 1.1. Yeah. So, so, this turns out to be equal to X H dot x p dot is equal to the top component is 0 and lower value is minus 0 0.1. This is what happens when x h is slightly more than 1, slightly more than equilibrium point, but x p is equal to the equilibrium point value that is equal to 1. So, when we do this, then we are speaking of this point here. For this point, we are getting that x h rate of change is equal to 0. So, the horizontal component is equal to 0 and the vertical component is equal to minus 0 0.1 that is why it is vertically downwards. Yeah. So, similarly one can check for each of these four points. What is the property of this point? It is x p population, the prey population is slightly more than 1, but x h population, the hunter population is equal to 1. For each of these four points one can verify and see that the arrows are indeed like this suggesting that there is a periodic orbit around this point. So, there are periodic orbits close to this, but this point on the other hand looks like a saddle point. So, let us verify this by linearizing the system at each of these two equilibrium points. So, let us go back to uh, the dynamical system. So, x h dot x p dot minus x h plus x p x h x p minus x p x h. So, del f by del x. So, this is equal to f 1 of x, f 2 of x equals this. So, the first row, the first function here is called as f 1 of x, the second function here is f 2 of x. Del f by del x is equal to a 2 by 2 matrix. The entry here is derivative of this with respect to x h that is equal to minus 1 plus x p. The entry here is derivative of this with respect to the second component of x that is x p. So, this is equal to x h. 
the entry that comes here is derivative of f2 with respect to xh here we get minus x p and the entry that comes here is the derivative of this with respect to x p the second component of the state for that we get 1 minus x h yeah so as expected this is a matrix this is a 2 by 2 matrix which depends on x p and x h so we are going to evaluate this matrix at the equilibrium point so del f by del x evaluated at the equilibrium point 0 comma 0 this is one of the equilibrium points and for this particular equilibrium point we get minus 1 0 0 1 and del f by del x evaluated at the other equilibrium point 1 comma 1 we get equal to by putting x p and x h both equal to 1 we get 0 1 minus 1 0 so we have these two a matrices one a matrix for the equilibrium point 0 comma 0 and the other a matrix for the equilibrium point 1 comma 1 so it's not difficult to see the eigenvalues of these two matrices so equilibrium point 0 comma 0 has eigenvalues for a diagonal matrix the eigenvalues are nothing but the diagonal entries the equilibrium point 0 comma 0 has eigenvalues 1 and minus 1 so we already saw that this is an example of a saddle point and the equilibrium point 1 comma 1 has eigenvalues what are the eigenvalues of the matrix of which matrix of this matrix eigenvalues of this matrix are plus minus j as we noted in one of the first few lectures that the eigenvalue of such a matrix if beta is not equal to 0 then the eigenvalue of this matrix are equal to alpha plus minus j beta yeah the eigenvalues of such a matrix are complex precisely what complex values are the eigenvalues alpha alpha plus minus j beta the diagonal entries are the real elements real part and the off diagonal entries with opposite signs correspond to the imaginary part of the eigenvalue so these are the eigenvalues even when beta is equal to 0 so for this particular equilibrium point equilibrium point we have this special case and so the eigenvalues are plus minus j which we know corresponds to a center yeah the equilibrium point is what we called a center so a center is one that has periodic orbits and we already saw that for this particular plot indeed this particular equilibrium point equilibrium point has periodic orbits and this is a saddle point so the linearized system is a center which is nothing but a continuum of periodic orbits very close by different initial conditions correspond to different periodic orbits they all correspond to periodic orbits and different periodic orbits is that the same for the non-linear system also this is the topic that we will see in detail today so please note that we have investigated the lotka volterra predator prey model for convenience the predator we have called as hunter so that we can use a subscript h and the prey we continue to call p x p the simplified model shows two equilibrium points one equilibrium point the linearized system is a saddle point and the other equilibrium point of the lotka volterra predator prey model corresponding to 1 comma 1 corresponds to a center after linearizing so what is important is that this particular equilibrium point is a center we already saw that these arrows are suggesting like this if it were a linear system then when we go close this is a periodic orbit when we go close to this and another initial condition it may or may not be a periodic may or may not be a different periodic orbit the linearized system says so but it need not mean for the original non-linear system also 
for example if these are two different initial conditions they correspond to the same periodic orbit but different initial conditions like this may correspond to different periodic orbits or might converge to the same periodic orbit this is a subject that we will see in detail today so if all these initial conditions correspond to different periodic orbits then we will like to say that there is a continuum continuum of periodic orbits these periodic orbits are not isolated but very close to each periodic orbit there is another periodic orbit in a very close vicinity suppose this is a periodic orbit the the initial conditions starting from here correspond to periodic orbits also in that sense there is a continuum of periodic orbits so it is a very well known important um, fact that for the particular lotka volterra model that we have taken for let us go back here for this particular lotka volterra predator prey model for constants a b c d we have two equilibrium points 0 0 and 1 1 when you assume a b c d equal to 1 but for a different point when a b c d are some positive constants possibly not equal to 1 there are two equilibrium points while the 0 0 is a saddle point the other equilibrium point is a center and moreover for the non linear system for this lotka volterra predator prey model there is a continuum of periodic orbits this particular fact for this particular model for any of these two models is a very important fact and one can modify this model suitably so that we have isolated periodic orbits so today we are going to see a different example where there are indeed isolated periodic orbits so let us use poincare bendixson criteria and the bendixson criteria to check if there are periodic orbits let us see the bendixson criteria what does this bendixson criteria say we will evaluate this particular quantity and check whether it's whether this is identically equal to zero or not if it is not identically equal to zero only then we can go ahead and apply the bendixson criteria so let us evaluate this particular quantity for our example for our example f1 of x was equal to minus xh plus xp times xh and f2 of x is equal to xp minus xp times xh so this f2 we could also call as fp and this is equal to fh fh denotes the rate of change of xh and f p denotes the rate of change of xp so let us evaluate del fh by del xh plus del fp by del xp when we evaluate this we get derivative of this with respect to xh is equal to minus 1 plus xp plus derivative of this with respect to xp we get this equal to 1 minus xh so this is equal to xp minus xh so is this identically equal to 0 no it is not identically equal to 0 yeah so it is that is why we can go ahead and apply the bendixson criteria let us now apply it and see xp minus xh sign of this quantity if the sign does not change over a region the bendixson criteria says that if the sign of this particular quantity does not change on a region then there are no periodic orbits contained inside that region so when is xp xp minus xh equal to 0 it is along this line so everywhere to the right of this line this this is xh this is x p to the right of this line this quantity is negative and above this line or to the left of this line this quantity is positive so the bendixson criteria says that there cannot be a periodic orbit contained to the right of this line nor can there be a periodic orbit 
to the top of this line it does not so this is the equilibrium point 1 comma 1 the Bendixson criteria does not rule out such a periodic orbit that does not lie entirely in this region nor does it lie entirely in this region. Yeah. So, this is an important property to note that the Bendixson criteria only says that can such a periodic orbit exist inside this region? No, this is not possible. Can a periodic orbit lie entirely in this region where the sign of this is all positive? That is also not possible. However, this particular Bendix periodic orbit could exist. So, Bendixson criteria is only a sufficient condition for non-existence of a periodic orbit lying entirely inside a region. Let us now check what the Bendixson criteria says for a linear system x dot is equal to A x for which the equilibrium point is 0 comma 0. Yeah? So, Bendixson criteria is applicable when for the planar case that is when x has two components at each time instant x of t has two components x 1 and x 2. So, suppose a was equal to yeah, may, uh, maybe we see a slide about this. So, for the Lutka Volterra predator prey model we have already seen this before we see another example let us see this particular case periodic orbit for a a that looks that is of this form. So, our a we have already assumed in the it is of this form and we have now we will do del f 1 by del x 1 plus del f 2 by del x 2. Notice that these two terms are nothing but the diagonal entries of this matrix a. So, for this particular a the diagonal entries are both 0. So, they add up to 0 also. So, they are identically equal to 0 no matter which x 1 x 2 you check this is going to be equal to 0. This particular quantity is expected to be independent of x 1 x 2 for linear systems. Why for linear systems for linear time invariant systems these 4 entries are all independent of x and hence you differentiate f 1 and f 2 f 1 with respect to x 1 f 2 with respect to x 2 which is nothing but just picking up these entries picking the values at these 2 positions and they are going to be independent of x. So, for this particular a we get this identically equal to 0. So, do we say that Bendixson criteria is not applicable or do we say that there are no periodic orbits? Of course, we know that for this particular a the eigenvalues of a are equal to plus minus square root of 2 times a. So, if A is positive then the eigenvalues are plus minus 2 times minus of 2 times A. Uh, we, we will just verify this. So, what is S i minus A? S i minus A is equal to so determinant of S i minus A is equal to S square plus 2 A. So, eigenvalues eigenvalues of the A matrix are nothing but roots of the determinant. The so, roots are square root of minus 2 A plus minus. So, if A is positive A greater than 0 then complex purely imaginary in fact. If the eigenvalues are purely imaginary then we know for a linear system there are periodic orbits and if a is less than 0 then eigenvalues are plus are, are real real one of them is greater than 0 other is less than 0 why because this if a is negative this quantity itself under the square root sign is positive so we can take the square root and one is positive one is negative so for this case the eigenvalues are here and for this case the eigenvalues are here and here. How far from the origin depends on the value of a of course, but whether they are depending on whether it is positive or negative affects whether the roots are purely imaginary or real. So, we know that for this case the equilibrium point is a center and there are periodic orbits while for this case 
the equilibrium point is a saddle and there are no periodic orbits. So, the important case when this is identically equal to 0, that particular case could correspond to either there are periodic orbits or there are no periodic orbits. This is just to see that the Bendixson criteria is unable to say anything when this is identically equal to 0. That is precisely the reason that Bendixson criteria assumed that this is not identically equal to 0 and then you start looking at whether the sign changes or not. So, let us take a case where for x dot is equal to a x, let us check what, what is del f 1 by del x 1 plus del f 2 by del x 2 what is the value of this? We will check that this is equal to 4 by calculation explicitly. So, x dot equal to a x means 2 x 1 plus 3 x 2 that is the meaning of a acting on x and the second row of a will be used to multiply with x to get minus 3 x 1 plus 2 x 2. So, when we do this then we differentiate the first component of x dot with respect to x 1 and we get this equal to 2. We are picking up just this entry and the second component of x dot that is f 2 of x with respect to x 2 we are doing this. So, notice that derivative of this with respect to x 1 is just this component this first 1 by 1 entry and the derivative of this with respect to x 2 is just this entry that is the reason that I said that doing this particular to evaluate this quantity is nothing but to add the diagonal entries for a linear system for a linear time invariant system. So, we get this equal to 4 this is greater than 0 and it is independent of x 1 x 2 for linear systems we expect that this will not depend on x 1 x 2 and it is inde indeed independent of x 1 x 2. Since it is greater than 0 for all x 1 x 2 we get that no periodic orbits. no periodic orbits in R2. In the entire state space, in the entire plane, there are no periodic orbits. So, for linear systems, we can check that as long as the diagonal entries do not add up to 0, yeah, as long as the diagonal entries do not add up to 0, this quantity will not be identically 0 and then we, we, we can see that periodic orbits are ruled out. When would periodic orbits be possible? If the diagonal entries add up to 0. If the diagonal entries add up to 0, we cannot say that the periodic orbits exist because the Bendixson criteria is silent for that case. It does not say anything when the diagonal entries add up to 0 identically. We already saw that it is possible that there are periodic orbits, it is also possible that periodic orbits do not exist when the diagonal entries add up to 0. So, this is already the complication for linear systems. So, for the lotka voltaire predator pre model, to show that there are periodic orbits, is a difficult thing and uh, it is an important research uh, topic after which it has been concluded that there, are there is a continuum of periodic orbits for the particular model that we studied.